Hi guys, welcome to the weekly vlog. It has been a hard couple of days. She started throwing up and vomiting and she had what I think was the flu. And it just broke my heart. I think I'm actually able to be excited about this new pregnancy now. Something exciting happened earlier this week. She kind of scooched up to me, kind of wiggled, crawled, I don't know what she was doing, but I was sitting on the floor and she scooted up to me and she held onto my leg and pulled herself up to standing. It was crazy and she's gotten so good at if I hold my hands out and she grabs both my hands with her hands, she can just pull herself straight up. She's gotten so strong, I can't believe she's already doing that. And yesterday something terrible happened. She started throwing up and vomiting and she had what I think was the flu, but it was a super, super short lived one. It went from like three o'clock yesterday till partway through the middle of the night. She had a vomiting and diarrhea and then it switched to hey, a fever, but she was just so lethargic and she was just totally limp laying on me and I felt so bad. It's my it baby's first time getting sick. It was so terrible. I cried. I cried a lot. It was very sad. But she's like back to her normal busy self today, so I think she's fine. <laughs> and we've been working on switching one of her breastfed meals over to solids, which has been difficult because lately she just won't eat her food. Like she just makes horrible faces and spits it out and refuses. And I've tried different things and I don't know, I don't know what to do. I guess I'll just keep trying, but she does not want to eat, she just wants milk, and I don't know, I, I kind of want her to at least switch one meal over and start getting her switched so that she can be, just in case I get pregnant, I want her to at least be partly on food so that's not quite as hard to transition her over all the way early if we have to. I mean, probably not sooner than a year she wouldn't be totally transitioned over, but I think it's she's early enough to start, she's almost seven months. So we've been working on that, I just tried to feed her some egg. Hey, I just tried to feed her some egg and pears and she wouldn't eat them, so I gave her milk. <laughs> She's very silly. Well, a little update on Sophia today. Things kind of took a weird turn last night. She was so, so cranky. She was not very impressed with us at all. And she would not eat her dinner. She, I would latch her on and she would throw a huge fit and detach and throw herself around and then I would latch her back on and she would like, like just nurse for like, I don't know, five seconds. And then she would throw up it again, and it was like so frustrating. Like, I can take her not sleeping through the night, but if she won't nurse, that just really gets to me. That's how it was when she had thrush, it was so hard. So she ended up waking up only two hours after I put her to bed, because she was still hungry, <laughs> and she usually sleeps until the morning, so that was really weird. And then she woke up three more times during the night, so it was a really bad night. So I actually ended up taking her to the doctor, just because of the combination of that, and the throwing up, and all that, and she said, she probably had a flu bug. That's what the throwing up was and all that. And then she checked her all out and she doesn't have thrush or an ear infection or anything like that. She said she thinks she's just teething really bad. She's working on four teeth right now. The two upper and the two lower. And one of the lower ones, she said, is only a few days away from popping through, which is really exciting. And then we might get a little break after that. So she said that's why she's being fussy right now. So I am very relieved that it's something that's normal and not something that I have to fix. I just have to try to help her through this hard time and it'll it'll pass, but it's really difficult. And that's just the one thing that really gets me down is when she won't nurse, because that's that's how I comfort her and she loves nursing. And it's just such a special time. So when she cries all the time, it just, I've been feeling really kind of depressed and down and 
like the world is coming to an end, but I'm feeling a little bit better now that I know it's just heating. This girl is practicing her acrobatics, doing things that have never been done before. Oh, <laughs> now you're just gonna stare at me instead of actually doing it? That figures. Come on. Get the legs up. Show us what you got. You guys, it has been a hard couple of days. I found out I was pregnant. My milk supply is almost gone. She's teething. She won't eat. I've been trying to do a ton of things for her milk supply. She's been sleeping in our bed so that she can nurse all through the night. I've been taking my mother's milk tea. I've been also taking a capsule supplement that has less thistle leaf and fenugreek. And then my naturopath is gonna make a lactation herbal tincture for me that I have to go pick up tomorrow. But I am just trying so hard to get my milk supply back up because I really want to nurse her through at least part of my pregnancy. I don't want to give up this soon. And so my left breast hadn't let down in like two or three days. It was like done. There were some there were some really hard days, you guys. But last night when I was getting her ready for bed and I was nursing her, it let down. And it was only a little bit, it was really short, but that is an improvement. I am so excited about that. And it let down again in the middle of the night when she was eating, which was really exciting too. It actually let down so much that the other one started leaking and the other one hasn't leaked in a long time. Like, I'm just not one of those women who leaks a lot. I mean, at, at the beginning, yes, I leaked a lot, but I haven't leaked for months. Like, once my milk supply regulated, I stopped leaking. So that was really exciting that it's up enough to do that and so I think her sleeping with us tonight is really helping and I hope the supplements are helping I know my thyroid's high and that's not helping so I'm really trying to get that under control I'm trying to drink a ton of water hi you're so cute <laughs> yes oh I'm trying to drink a gallon of water a day because that seems like what I have to drink to keep my supply up Otherwise, my lips feel so chapped and my throat is just so dry. It's insane the amount of water I need to drink. You're silly. What are you doing? Are you eating my shirt? Hi. So I'm trying, I'm trying so hard. I almost gave up there though. Like, I'm just gonna really try to push through this and because I, I want to push through this and possibly even tandem nurse. I don't know if I'll be able to make it throughout my whole pregnancy breastfeeding her, but I'm gonna try my best. Well, last night was interesting. I had her sleep with us again when I put her to bed. Whoa, did you hear that thunder? That's crazy. I put her to bed at her own bed at eight and then me and Luke came to bed between nine and 10. And she woke up, I think around a little after 10 and so she came to bed with us. But she kept doing this weird thing all night where she would wake up and just wiggle and scratch me and hit me and she was not happy in our bed and she was like not tired. I don't know if we were disturbing her too much and she was tired of it. I'm gonna go inside, this is loud. So I don't know if she would rather sleep in her crib. I kept putting her in her crib whenever this would happen. The first time she was awake for an hour and even when I put her in her crib, she kept waking up. And I didn't know what was wrong so I didn't, I didn't let her cry in her crib because I thought she might be in pain or something. But then she finally did fall asleep in her crib and was up there for like an hour. So it was a really weird night. She she was like off and on in her bed and the last two nights she's been in her bed like the entire night except for like once each night when I put her back when she did this weird awake and wiggly phase. I don't I don't know what's going on. So today she seems a little bit fussy. I she hasn't pooped in a few days and since she's been eating solids and not exclusively breast milk, I feel like she should be pooping every day or at least every other day. Exclusively breastfed babies don't need to poop every day. Sometimes she would go a week or two and I mean, I would freak me out, but that is, is normal and there's nothing wrong with her, but uh, it has been two or three days now. And so this morning I gave her a little bit of prune juice and this morning she did not feel like nursing. So that's kind of a bummer. My milk does feel like it's a little fuller, but I think she's just so used to it not being there that she's she doesn't even want to try at all, and that's kind of frustrating for me. So we'll see how it goes. I, we might try letting her sleep with us one more night, and if it ends up being like last night, we're gonna move our bed back into the living room and just see if she can sleep in her own crib, because 
If we're not in there making noise, she might sleep fine. Who knows? And since my milk is coming back up, and I know she's getting enough food, I mean, she still will nurse throughout the night. I'll just have to go in there. But I don't know. This isn't working. Like, I am pregnant now. I need my sleep. And she might sleep better too if we're not in there. Hello. <laughs> Hi. Hi. You see yourself? <laughs> I know. Well, last night she didn't do much better than the night before, so we are moving her bed out into the living room because she would. She slept in her bed for most of the night anyway. She doesn't seem to sleep with us very well anymore. After she eats, she's just awake, and then I move her to her bed, and then she's quiet until <laughs> until one of us make a noise makes a noise and then she wakes up so I think if we were in there disturbing her she would sleep better and my milk supply isn't quite where I want it but I'm trying not to feel discouraged about it it's still higher than it was so I wanted to show you some of the stuff I've been taking to increase my milk supply I'm not positive I, this will actually work I'm trying my very hardest to bring it back up but I don't know if my pregnancy hormones and my thyroid will let me so I go to a naturopath and this is the tincture that I'm taking for my thyroid so that should help my milk supply if I can get my thyroid under control. And she made me another herbal tincture for lactation support. So I take two dropper fulls of those four times a day. And then I'm taking a prenatal and some vitamin A and vitamin D and fish oil. And I'm also drinking my mother's milk tea. I drink three to four cups of that every day. I also have oatmeal for breakfast at least every morning. And I'm planning on making some lactation cookies too. I'm just, I ordered some ingredients like flaxseed meal and brewer's yeast in the mail and that's gonna be coming soon. So I'm trying a bunch of different things. Hi. So if it will go back up, this should, all this stuff should make it go back up. I also ordered all the ingredients that I need to make her her raw milk formula just in case none of this works because I want it on hand. I ordered some glass bottles so that nothing leaches off of plastic bottles when you heat it up. I ordered a bottle warmer so that I don't heat it too high and kill all the good things in her raw milk formula. I'm gonna be using the recipe out of the Sally Fallon Nourishing Traditions cookbook. Here's my batch of tea that I made. This is gonna last me today and part of tomorrow. I like to make a half a gallon at once because I drink a lot of it. Sophia has also been doing really good with eating solid foods again. I've got here some applesauce I canned last year. And this is some pear sauce I canned last year. And she's also been eating some butternut squash that I canned as well. I am really glad I canned all this stuff because it's so handy to have, just like totally ready made. And you don't even have to thaw it out. It's just right there. In the butternut squash, I grated up some raw liver from my grandparents' cows last year. And she really liked that. She just, the only food she eats is egg yolk. I don't know why, but that's like the best food for her right now. And she will not eat it. I guess that's fine. Next week I want to introduce bananas and then after that carrots. It's kind of hard because I can only introduce one food a week in case she has a reaction and I want to introduce them all at once to see what she thinks. But we'll have to be patient, huh? What I've been doing if she doesn't like a food is I will put a little bit of my breast milk in it and so it tastes partly like something that she really likes so that's been helping a lot. Good job, sweet girl. Want some more applesauce? So I hadn't really been filming those first few days after I found out I was pregnant just because it was an emotional roller coaster. I went from being so happy and elated to kind of almost resentful towards the baby because they were taking away Sophia's milk supply and just like the whole range of emotions that I could possibly have. I had all of them <laughs> and it would just be different from one second to the next even. So I'm doing a little bit better now. I'm trying not to stress out about my milk because that'll help it come back up faster if I just don't worry about it. And I'm just trying to, it's its kind of confusing for me to see, to try to decide when she needs a supplement or when I should feed her some foods and not a milk supplement. So what I've been doing is if she can get my milk to let down, is I will just feed her some food after that and not give her a supplement. Even the other night, she couldn't get my milk to let down and I gave her a little bit of my breast milk storage and she would only eat like one and a half ounces of it and then she was seeming to get full. So that was kind of reassuring that even if it doesn't let down, she's still getting enough. I just want her to be comfortable. 
she's, I mean, she's getting enough. She's still having wet diapers and pooping and all that. She's, she's healthy. I just want her to get enough to be happy and comfortable. So, and that's what I've been worrying about lately. Hi, sweet girl. No, no, don't grab it. You're funny. You're so funny. Ah. <laughs> So yeah, just kind of very emotional, and I'm pregnant, so I'm like super crazy emotional. So yeah, it's been creepy, and uh, it was super stormy and rainy these last couple days. And ever since I became a mom, the clouds make me sad, and I love the sun. And before I had kids, I loved the cloudy weather, and sunny weather was my second favorite, so that's kind of weird how that changed. <laughs> I'm baking some cookies today. These are oatmeal raisin. I need to bring a dessert to a family get together, and I figured I might as well make one that's good for breast milk too. And oats are really great for that, so this will be good for everyone. So we were just over at Luke's parents' house having dinner, and it was a lot of fun. And Sophie ate twice there, and both times she was already awake. Usually I have to feed her right when she's waking up so she's still sleepy so she doesn't throw a huge fit. She's already awake. She eats so good. She got both sides to let down. She was so happy. She kept stopping to smile at me. It was like, just like old times. It was so amazing. And uh, I'm so glad that I'm gonna at least have some more of these really special times with her before the breastfeeding journey ends. I'm just really trying to soak up all these sweet little moments with her. I'm trying to remember them and I want to take a lot of pictures together and not to post but just just for us to have I heard that helps with this but she was constipated earlier today she just doesn't seem happy generally I don't know what to do I gave her a bottle of my frozen breast milk this evening for her bedtime meal and I gave her a five ounce bottle and she drank all of it and she was so happy and she was just sleepy and just kind of sluggish, like she was milk drunk. She hasn't been milk drunk in a while. And she just went right to bed, right to sleep without her binky. She usually has to have her binky. And it just broke my heart because I know that she's probably been so hungry for like this past week. Like, not enough to kill her obviously, but she's not been comfortable. And I feel so bad that I didn't, I didn't see this. So I think I made the decision to switch over that last meal to either breast milk or when I run out of that, my raw milk formula that I'm gonna make. And we'll see where it goes from there. We might just keep dropping one feeding at a time. I wanna try to go another week or more with just dropping that one feeding and see how she does, but I am feeling a lot of emotions right now, just really sad that I didn't see this before and that she's been so miserable all this time and that I, I could have fixed it. I just didn't, I thought I was teething a lot of that time and I thought that I could fix this and I just need to let go of control and realize that it's better to have a fed and happy baby than to insist on her being breastfed the entire time. So, yeah. I'm sad and I'm happy because I know she's happy now and I want to do what's best for her and I think right now this is the best decision for her and for the new baby. I don't want to cause too much stress on my body or take too much reserves from my body. I'm trying to build up blood volume with this new pregnancy and so a lot of my liquids are going towards that and I've been feeling really dehydrated because my body's trying to build up blood volume for the new baby and as well as produce breast milk for Sophia. So it'll be better for my body just not so taxing as well as it'll be better for the baby in that I won't be so stressed out and possibly cause a miscarriage from being so stressed so it is better in a lot of ways it's just really hard and um, it's gonna be a long grieving process but I'm really glad that we're just gonna drop one feeding at the, one feeding at a time and that'll make it so that when she does eat my breasts are a little fuller and she'll be happier and we'll have more special moments together, but yeah. I'm really hoping that I can breastfeed the next baby for longer than this. Last night was so amazing. Oh, I, I guess she has just been so hungry all this time and I feel I'm really happy that this works so well, but I feel so sad that I didn't see this sooner. I just feel really guilty and happy at the same time, it's weird. 
But she, even though it's the 4th of July and there was a ton of fireworks going off, she slept until 3.30 and I fed her. I actually had enough milk by then because I hadn't fed her dinner and she wasn't nursing all night. And then she went back to bed and slept until 8. And it was so nice. It was like before all this started. So I'm really glad that we decided to start supplementing her for one meal at a time. I'll probably go a week before I add in the next meal. But this is really exciting and I'm... It's nice when I get a good night's sleep because then I'm actually... I feel like I'm actually able to be excited about this new pregnancy now and not just worried about my milk supply. So, I realized something sad today is that breast milk, once it's been frozen, it can't be left out for more than 24 hours or it has to be thrown away. Which is heartbreaking because this is like liquid gold to me because I don't have very much of it. And I had this much in my jar and this has been out for two days. So. I'm gonna have to throw it away, and that's, that's horrible. <laughs> I'm so sad about it. But I should have researched that more, and I'll know for next time. So I feel like I should do something special with that breast milk, but it's not like I can really do much with it at this point. I'm gonna water my favorite plant in the garden with it. I don't know. I'm feeling all sad and sentimental. I'm emotional and pregnant. But I uh, mixed up my first batch of raw milk formula today with my mom. She helped me because. She used to make that for my sister. So it was good to get that made, but it was, uh, I don't know, it's just such an emotional thing. I'm so glad she's gonna get fed, that's the most important thing, but it's just like this emotional thing to not be breastfeeding anymore. Or, well, I still am, but I'm slowly weaning off, like as slow as I can, but she still needs to be fed. So I don't know, would you guys be interested in seeing a recipe for that? Just, it's in the Nourishing Traditions cookbook, but it's a little bit complicated to make. And if you're using goat's milk, there's a, a little bit of a variation. So I was thinking about doing a video recipe on that, just for anyone who wants to make that and doesn't really know exactly how. So I'll probably work on that in the next few days too. Suki. Suki. Did you get a bird? Is it stuck in there? Uh, are you gonna get the bird? Yeah. everyone, it's Monday now, and I forgot to vlog the last couple days. The last couple days have been better. Still emotional, and I still sometimes really can't believe that I'm pregnant again. It's just so crazy and so awesome, and I just have a lot of emotions about it. The last couple nights, she hasn't slept quite as good as I hoped. Usually, when she gets enough food, she would sleep until like 5.30 in the morning. She would sleep like most of the night. But these last couple nights, she's been getting up at like, between 12 and 2 and then again between like 4 and 6. So two times a night is not bad <laughs> and I wanted her to at least wait three or four hours in between her feedings at night because that gives my body enough time to replenish my milk supply. If I didn't have this weird thing going on I could feed her every hour or two if she wanted to but I can't really do that right now. She'll just get way too frustrated and there's not really anything there <laughs> after two hours so but two times a night has been working out really well and I'm happy to feed her whenever I can during the night if she wants to nurse because it's just not going to be going on for too much longer which is really sad. I have a lot of emotions about it. I'm really happy that we found a solution and I'm super excited that she's feeling better and I feel bad that this was going on for a while before I even realized that she was I just couldn't get that she was teething. But last night, no, the the night before last, I fed her the last of my breast milk freezer stash mixed with some raw milk formula. And that was very emotional for me knowing that was the last of the freezer milk. That's the last of my breast milk I will ever feed her in a bottle. And she'll be able to get it right from the source for a little while longer, but I don't know, it's just it's hard for me knowing that something is the last thing. And yeah. At first she did not like the formula, she was not a huge fan, she would throw a huge fit about it and keep stopping like she was doing for a while with actually nursing because there was nothing coming out and I was worried that the bottle was clogged or something but um, now that she's had it for a few nights she's gotten over that weird thing so I'm pretty sure it was just her not liking the taste of it 
A couple pretty exciting things that aren't related to this though is that she pulled herself up to the chicken fence out there the other day. She was just sitting in front of the chicken fence watching our mama hen and chicks and she grabbed onto the fence and just pulled herself right up standing and it was crazy. She's been able to pull herself up but we usually like let her hold onto our fingers and do it. So that's like the first time she's done it like totally, totally on her own. It was just crazy. <laughs> and the other thing is that she's actually crawling now. She's not very fast, but it's definitely crawling. <laughs> and so I'm having to keep a uh, way closer eye on her because usually what I do is we have our bed out in the living room, you know, and I put her in the middle of the bed and she can't get to the edge. Like it would take her a long time to get to the edge. So then I could just sit in the same room and fold laundry and go make my coffee and just not worry about it. She, and then if she did tip over from sitting, she wouldn't get hurt because it's a padded bed. But now she can crawl and she can get to the edge pretty fast. So that little way of getting stuff done is over now. <laughs> I'll have to find a new way. So overall, I'm feeling pretty happy about how things are going now. But I don't know, I'm extra emotional because I'm pregnant is probably part of this. I'm definitely starting to feel pregnancy symptoms though. I like even if we didn't take a test, I would be able to tell I'm pregnant by now. I'm having a lot of round ligament cramping, which is actually my first sign. And then on Saturday, I got my first round of morning sickness, which is partly why I haven't vlogged in a few days. So that's gonna be fun, having morning sickness for three months while well, having a, a baby that's just learning to crawl. This will be hard while I'm in the thick of it, but I will be very glad I went through this having two kids really close in age and once they're a little older and can help, I will be so grateful that I went through this and I'm learning so much stuff for my next kids and for helping other moms is like partly what helped me get through the thick of that horrible breastfeeding thing was that I knew I wanted to learn as much as possible so that I could help other moms if they go through this situation because there's very there's not very much information on there about getting pregnant that soon and especially while you're breastfeeding. So I'm pretty sure this vlog is long enough now so I'm just gonna end it here and uh, hopefully it didn't bore you guys too much. I mostly want this on here for just me remembering. I want to remember this this week before I found out I was pregnant and the week or more after because it was there's a cat on the roof. <laughs> okay. It was quite the emotional ride and I won't be able to really remember it very well unless I had documented it. I hope this was a little bit helpful or entertaining or you guys enjoyed it, so. <clears throat> I post three new videos a week on Monday, Thursday, and Saturday, and I will see you in my next video. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. She's been doing that with her mouth lately, though. Oh, she's just like, that's all the time. Even when she's crying, it's weird. She's just like very enthralled with being able to do something with her mouth. <laughs> okay, I'll see you guys later.